What are the reasons for those problems? Well, one reason is that parties are unprepared for court hearings. That is, they go from one court hearing to the next doing little or nothing in between. And that's because the focus of the system is on court hearings rather than what happens in between the court hearings. So that it is not uncommon for defence counsel, for example, and actually I shouldn't just really focus on defence counsel here, the same applies to prosecutors, for really not to look at the file until the morning of the next hearing. And indeed, to the extent that you need to do something like taking instructions from your clients, you'll do it in the precincts of the courtroom before the case is called. Um, not surprisingly, because often it's very difficult to get defendants otherwise to come and see you or get in contact with you. So everything happens on the day of hearing. Not surprisingly, that means that often things haven't been done that should have been done, um, or things arise from talking to the defendant that haven't previously been thought about. Therefore, there needs to be a further adjournment. That's compounded by the fact that there are perverse incentives, or at least insufficient disincentives, to delay. There's really in the system very little that penalises people for delay. And I mean by that penalises them in the sense that there are some adverse consequences for them that flow from that. Not just, again, defendants or defence counsel, prosecutors, judges, court staff. There's really nothing individually that affects them. To some degree, actually, in small courts and provincial areas, there are some adverse consequences because it's all on a much smaller scale and the same judges are dealing with cases um, time after time. And that's why you often find in provincial areas cases do move through much more quickly and in a much more cooperative way. In large areas where you know, the judge who's dealing with it today won't be the same judge who deals with it next time, doesn't matter to them whether they finish off the list that day or not, there are far fewer immediate consequences for them because it's not going to affect their list next week. And of course, you know, equally, if you don't turn up at trial as a defendant, what happens? You don't turn up because you don't really want to be tried and sentenced on that day. Um, you'd rather wait till after Christmas. Or if it's a domestic, you'd really rather not turn up to trial have it rescheduled to the future and hope the complainant changes his mind. What happens? Well, a warrant to arrest is issued. You're arrested, you're taken before the court and you're bailed and another trial date's set three months' time. And of course you end up getting exactly what you want. That is why, incidentally, the sorts of problems I'm talking about here are particularly acute in family violence courts. It is, it is not uncommon in family violence courts to have the experience that one district court judge, a friend of mine, had one day and ran me in a state of fury and despair to have um, eight family violence fixtures set down for a defendant hearing that day. Six defendants never turned up. And one of the others fell over and then they had the other trial done by lunchtime. Because there's no disincentives for people. And actually, there are a whole bunch of obstacles to moving things through quickly in the form of legislation and established practices. So, those are the reasons for the problem. What can we do about it? Well, first of all, just let me talk about the key components of some of the recent reforms, both in practice and through the Corona Procedure Act. First of all, the police have developed some of you will know, I'm sure Trevor knows this, but something called the Police Alternative Resolution Scheme, which is really designed to take a lot of the chaff that goes through the court system out of the court system. So 
so they, are, they have developed as well as the police diversion scheme um, essentially a system of formal warnings for minor cases that don't need to go to court. Now actually the police objective um, is to have the percentage of cases dealt with in that way increased to about 19% by 2015, which is obviously shifting a substantial number of cases out of the courts. That's already having quite an impact on um, overall volume. Um, secondly, the police have made some efforts to develop better scrutiny of the case to determine what charges ought to be laid, um, either before or shortly after they're laid, to stop cases falling over after they've been in the system for two or three months. Now I actually need to, to pause to tell you that part of the reason for that is that this varies between one area and another and it has come down as a result of efforts like this to address the problem. But as at about three or four years ago, um, in the larger metropolitan areas like Auckland in particular, 10 to 12 per cent of cases that were laid in court by the court by the police had all charges withdrawn after a not guilty plea. So this is not police diversion, this is all charges being withdrawn. Simply because the police didn't have the evidence to support the charges once it got to that point in the system. Often this is two months, three months down the track after they already had half a dozen court appearances. <coughs> Thirdly, there have been efforts to have, again, um, in practice, more streamlined court processes so that there um, is a better ability for defendants to plead guilty early um, after receipt of relevant information. So that there have been efforts through legal services to have earlier legal aid assignments. The police have put in place practices in most areas now to provide initial disclosure um, at first court appearance so that people don't simply get an adjournment while they're waiting for initial disclosure. Um, and therefore, <coughs> there are now fewer appearances before defendants are um, required to plead. The objective of the Criminal Procedure Act is that apart from the exceptional case, there will never be more than two court appearances before the defendant pleads. That is not the case now. So that you would have, when I say to, I should rephrase that, um, apart from the exceptional case, they would be expected to plead on the second court appearance. 